This farm produces approximately 5,600 iron ingots per hour and operates at an efficiency of 99% of the maximum possible iron farm rate. With some optional modifications, it will run at a 100% efficiency and is easily expandable to run at whatever capacity you desire. A full column will run at over 50,000 iron ingots per hour. I'm not going to do a block by block per se because this is kind of boring, but this will give you all the information that you need to build the farm. Just be ready to pause and I will add timestamps to help. Here are the materials you need to build the farm. The specific types are not important, so go wild. First, you need to find a good location. The farm is 19 by 19 blocks wide and long. The farm was designed with orientation, i.e. direction in mind. So best practice is to follow the orientations recommended, but if you don't, no fear. It will still work really well anyways. To find your direction in Minecraft, hit F3, then look here. It says which way you are facing. Once you find your 19 by 19 area, you should locate your center block. It's helpful to mark it and to write it down. Then we need to build up to the first villager layer. The minimum distance is seven blocks. If you have hills, etc. around and don't want to landscape, then go a bit higher. I usually set the layout first before the details. From the center block, build six temporary blocks out in the negative Z direction. Then from that sixth block, build five in both positive and negative X directions and place your non-spawnable block for your villagers to stand on at the sixth block. From this, build out 11 blocks in the positive Z direction and place your non-spawnable block as the 12th block. These are your villager pocket locations. You can place the trap doors now. They should face each other in the Z direction. Best practice now is to place a zombie block. It's the center block on the Z axis. Go five from each side, one block down. The quick way to do this is to use water to get below. Once done, we can build our villager pockets. It's just two blocks out in each direction other than where the trap door is placed. Beds are placed while facing towards the villager block so that the pillows are towards the center. Chains are placed on top of the bed. Then we place a block two blocks over the trap door. Repeat this for all four villager clusters. Now make sure that you remove any unnecessary temporary blocks that the villagers can wake up on around the bed before putting the villagers in. Now here comes the fun part, kinda, getting our villagers. I find that the best way to do this is with some pre-prepped work. Build a simple villager breeder above the farm ahead of time and breed the villagers up. Three villagers per pocket, then push them with water streams and drop them into location. Just make sure that they are secured and grown up so that they won't bounce out. Otherwise, you can use mine carts or whatever you think is best and populate your villagers. Once done, cap them off with a block above their heads and they are set to live a life of being terrified. Next, we can get our zombies. Just build a total of two temporary blocks up and four blocks all around that top block. Remove the temporary blocks and lure your zombie in. Once in place, cap them off with a one block air cap above their heads and make sure to name tag them so that they don't despawn. Now just repeat this for the other side. Once this is done, we can start with the spawning platform. This is a little weird since it's not symmetrical, so pay attention. Let's start in the negative X and negative Z corner. Verify this by standing on the block above the villagers and the other pockets should be in the positive directions. First place obsidian under your feet, then two more in the negative Z direction. Then in the negative X direction, place two solid blocks, one obsidian, then one more solid block. This is one of the platform's corners. From here, in the positive Z direction, place 15 more solid blocks for a total of 16 blocks. From here, we are going to complete the layout first. Moving towards the positive X direction, start with an obsidian, then two solid blocks, another obsidian, then two more solid blocks. Repeat this pattern for a total of 18 blocks from the original block. It will give you a total platform length of 19 blocks, and the last block should be an obsidian block. Now just follow the pattern and fill in the rest. 
After that's finished, build the portals up three blocks and cap them. Then spawn proof the top of the portals and you can light them now or later, whichever you prefer. So that's the first layer. We just need to repeat this process two more times. Your center block that you wrote down before should be located on top of the center portal. Once you find it, it's six blocks above the portal, including your spawn proofing up to the next layer. It should be 10 blocks from the platform below if you'd like to check. I just want to add here, if you like this farm design or the format of the tutorial, please let me know. Liking and commenting will help support the video and give me that feedback. Any support you give is highly appreciated. Thank you and back to the video. From here, just repeat what you did for the first layer two more times. Once done, we can build the redstone portion. It doesn't matter what elevation you do this at, so ground level, whatever that is, should be fine. Again, where you build the scaffolding doesn't really matter, but I like it centered on the build one block from the obsidian. So the build will be slightly different for 1.19 versions versus 1.18.2 and below. For future versions, check the description to see what arrangement you use. For both versions, we start two blocks from where the scaffolding tower will be. 1.19 versions need 10 hopper. We place a temporary block, then place the first hopper while facing into that block. Then we place the next hopper while facing into that first hopper. We repeat this three more times for a total of four hoppers in a row, all facing into that temporary block. Then we move towards the center of the build, place your hopper one block inwards while facing into that last hopper. Then we will fill in the next four hoppers parallel to the first row, again while placing each hopper while facing into the hopper placed before it. Finally, we break the temporary block and place a hopper while facing into the last hopper place. Now all of the hoppers should connect in a loop. For 1.18.2 and below, we do the same process but with six hoppers in two rows of three. For both versions, we place three comparators off the outside line of hoppers. For 1.19 versions, we start with the first hopper and skip one hopper for each comparator. So there is a one block gap between comparators. For 1.18.2 and below, we take the comparator off of all three hoppers in a row. Now we place a solid opaque block on the output of the comparators and place trapdoors on the outside of the solid blocks. First we place one scaffolding on top of the solid block and then when looking downwards and outwards from the build, we place a side supported scaffolding. Then build this new scaffolding up to the top layer of your build, whatever that is. Repeat this for all three solid blocks. Now to complete the counting system, off to the side of the outside hoppers line, build three blocks parallel to the side of your build and then one towards the build center. Then place a target block next to that block and on top of the target block, place a dropper facing upwards, then a hopper facing downwards, then a composter on top of that hopper. Next, we add a comparator out of the dropper, one redstone dust, then a repeater with a redstone line over the outside line of hoppers. You can then cover the remaining hoppers with composters to prevent items from dropping in them and to minimize lag. Finally, we need to add an item to both the dropper and the hopper loop. It doesn't matter which hopper you add the item to, but after you place your item, wait for one of the comparators to activate, and then switch all of your trap doors so that they are parallel to the ground before continuing on your build. Now we've completed the counting system. This was originally designed by Mambo Jumbo. I will put a link in the description. Now we just need to make our repeater loop. For 1.19 versions, it's 18 total repeaters. All but the last one is set to four ticks, but the last one set to two ticks for a total of 70 ticks. For 1.18.2 and below, it's 25 total repeaters set to 100 ticks total, i.e. four ticks for every repeater. To build this, we place a redstone dust next to the target block, then place half of the repeaters in a row towards the center of the build. Add a solid block at the end of the line of repeaters and a redstone dust next to it. Then place the rest of your repeaters in the opposite direction. Now just right click your repeaters to set the correct delay. Finally, finish the loop with a couple of redstone dust. At the end, you can optionally set up an on off switch. Place a sticky piston one block from the solid block, which will retract the block when it's stroked. Then place another sticky piston two blocks from the redstone dust, an observer facing into that piston, 
and then build a little bridge over the pistons and connect them with redstone and add a lever. Now we have an on off switch. Finally, we just need to add the redstone lines and pistons to the zombie chambers. Just place upward facing pistons under each zombie and build blocks over to your scaffolding. Place an observer into the scaffolding column and redstone out. A repeater at the fork and redstone to the block next to the pistons. Repeat this for each layer. Remember, the observer should face into different scaffolding for each layer if you are making the three layer design. If you are making more than three layers, then just continue to repeat the pattern upwards. Finally, place non-spawnable blocks on every surface that is potentially spawnable, such as the observers. Now we are done with the overworld portion. I have to admit, there's nothing special about the nether side. I kind of messed up in my other video and world download as I had a split bottom portal, which is totally unnecessary. The best way to set up the nether side is with a boat in the portal. Just go through one of your portals and you can use that generated portal. If it's floating, make sure to take off the sides here. We will then break the top two blocks of the portal to place our boat. You need to trap a mob in the boat. Chickens are usually the easiest. So take some eggs with you, get a chick, and trap it in your boat. Make sure to do this above your portal. Once done, row your boat gently into place above your portal so that it's lined up with the portal frame and then down into the portal space. Then you can just cap your portal and light it. After that, the kill chamber is quite easy. Just surround both sides with blocks to contain the golems. I find that three blocks long and a couple of blocks down works quite well. Place signs across one layer with one block space for lava above it and place your lava under the portal frame. Then just place chests with hoppers pointing into them for the entire bottom layer. This will be fast enough for a three layer design and a bit more, but very high capacity designs need a more complex collection system. For that, I recommend you look at the world download. So that's it, the farm's all done. Just make sure that if there are any golems that have spawned and are not going through the portal, that you kill them off before you turn the farm on. Then to turn on the farm, just switch the lever up. If you want to turn off the farm, first switch the lever off, wait until all of the repeaters are unlit, then put all the trapdoors up parallel to the ground. The trapdoors will reset when you switch the lever on to start the farm again. If you haven't already, check out my iron farm efficiency video. It will explain in detail how and why this farm is designed the way it is, which is very helpful when, for instance, troubleshooting this farm if you have issues. This version of the farm will give about a 99% efficiency or about 4,887 iron ingots per hour on average for 1.19 version. Since 1.19 nerfed iron farms, the rate for 1.18.2 and below versions will be a bit more at about 5,612 iron ingots per hour on average. But the efficiency for 1.18.2 and below is a little bit less at about 98%. That said, if you want to improve your efficiency even more, you have two routes. First, you can space the layers out more. Just add 10 more block space between layers. This will remove the possibility of the villagers to detect another layer's golem. For 1.19, the efficiency will be about 100%. For 1.18.2 and below, it will be about 99%. The other route to go is to add a fourth villager. This was a very good viewer suggestion. The fourth villager will increase the efficiency to about 100% for both versions. The downside of this route is that it's harder to build and causes more lag due to more entities and collisions. If you want to go this route, you will need to add a bed, which you can arrange just like the other three beds, but place where the trapdoor went. On the topic of lag, I want to quickly note that the rates listed are for 20 ticks per second. If you decide to build a full column and your game is so laggy that it runs below 20 ticks per second, then you are not getting the rates listed in real life time. The game time rates will be right, but since your game is running slower than designed, the real time rate will be lower. For instance, that 1 million iron per hour farm that I showed in my iron farm video actually produced about 100,000 iron ingots per hour real time on my computer. That's because my game was running at two ticks per second or one tenth of the design game speed. 
So it's important that you take lag into consideration when planning to build these huge farms, as it might limit your actual production. That being said, for most people, even this three layer farm is more than they need. If you want a little bit smaller farm that also has a high efficiency and is much easier to build, check out the lower capacity design linked at the end of this video. But that's gonna do it for this video. So thank you so much for watching and goodbye.